The narrative of the dead. I put on my headphones repeatedly and listened to the audio output that emanated with amazing clarity from the deck. The voice that I heard was familiar to me, but I couldn't make out whose voice it was. Though the curiosity bothered me I was carried away with what it said. It was a preamble to the narrative of the dead. Would like to share it with you. The preamble. Man is made of flesh, bones and blood, and a soul. The body consists of the first three elements and is called a cage. The inexhaustible soul is the fountainhead of everlasting life. It resides temporarily in the cage. It never dries up even after the death of the person in whose body it dwelt for a certain period of time. Life goes on. It never ceases. The soul is such an invigorating force that within a few hours of its liberation from the caged body, the body decomposes and stinks. Thus, the soul nurtures the body till it stays there. The body signifies impermanence, and the soul, permanence. Most men take good care of their bodies throughout their lives, and ignore the soul. They keep their bodies well treated, and the soul ill treated. They put on costly clothes. Relish rich food and indulge in sensuous luxuries. After its liberation from such an awful body, the soul does not hover over the departed person for even a little while, but joins the mainstream of eternal life. A few people take good care of the soul residing within their confines. They honor the soul's permanent link with eternity. They do not corrupt the caged body. They do not pollute it with filth. When liberated from such a cage the soul, in its state of consciousness, hovers over the deceased person for a certain period of time. How did I get hold of the preamble and the narrative of the dead, is a story in itself. I would like to tell you the tale in a nutshell. I have an irresistibly freakish habit of collecting odd objects from ruins, haunted houses, cemeteries, graveyards, debris of fallen buildings, trunks of dead trees and garbage dumps. Each item I lay my hands on, adds to my precious collection. One day I was looking for abandoned nests of birds in the hollowed trunks of godforsaken trees. During my search for the abandoned nests, I saw a nest tucked precariously in the ventilator of a dilapidated building. Reaching it through the collapsed stairs, dangling beams, fallen doors and windows, and floors strewn with broken panes was an unforgettable adventure. I managed my way to the ventilator. It was a fairly large nest. Perhaps it was an eagle's nest. I carefully detached it from the ventilator. What I discovered in the nest was amazing. A polythene bag was lying in it. I opened the bag. It contained an audio cassette. I rushed back to my apartment along with the cassette and the nest. I inserted the cassette in the deck, put on my headphones and played it. After a few minutes of the sounds of a muffled voice, the narration got underway with stunning clarity. It opened with the preamble. It was followed by the narration told in a captivating voice. I want to share my experience with you. If you can't listen to the cassette, you can at least go through its transcription. Having gone through the preamble, do read the narrative of the dead. The narrative of the dead. I was lying on a stretcher in the emergency room of the federal government hospital in Islamabad. Since I was not an important person, I was attended to by the junior doctors who were performing their mandatory routines in the hospital. They surrounded me, and each of them in their own particular way tried to figure out what was wrong with me. They believed I was unconscious. Whereas I was not. I could hear them talk clearly, and see them with my eyes closed. I think he had a massive heart attack a little while ago. This is exactly what I am trying to ascertain. Then. He doesn't have a pulse. Suddenly the young doctors caught hold of my wrists, and tried to feel the pulse. They couldn't feel it. They glanced at each other in surprise. He is dead. A young doctor remarked. He is not, Dr. Ba Ram. A bespectacled, 
Lanky doctor said. Don't you see that he is breathing? The young doctors panicked. Some of them put their stethoscopes to my chest and tried to listen to the heartbeat. It was not there. A doctor smiled and said, Friends, we are wasting our time. He is dead. Let us hand him over for an autopsy. How can you send a living person for autopsy? The lanky doctor persisted. He is not dead. He is alive he is breathing. The bewildered doctors looked at each other in disbelief. One of them remarked, he doesn't have a pulse, his heart doesn't beat, but he is breathing. Isn't it puzzling? A short, fat doctor said, I think, he doesn't have a heart in his hairy chest. Don't be ridiculous, Dr. Mellon, the lanky doctor rebuked him. No one is born without a heart in his chest. Perhaps it is a miracle. The age of miracles ended a long time ago. A lady doctor, Farzana, was trying to monitor my blood pressure. She stepped back from the mobile apparatus. How can he breathe? Bewildered, she asked. He doesn't have any blood pressure. Meanwhile two doctors attached the cables of an ECG machine to my chest and turned it on. The young doctors leaned over the machine and kept looking at the graphic reading as it emerged from the printer. I could clearly see the reaction on their faces. They were puzzled. A couple of them appeared frightened. They slowly moved away from the machine. Dr. Barham looked shaken. He said, his heart doesn't beat but his ECG is normal. Nothing is normal. Terrified Dr. Farzana remarked, and left the room. The remaining doctors followed her. I was left alone in the emergency room. They had recovered me from a stinking gunny bag. It was an awful night that I had to spend in the sack. It was small and uncomfortable. The night prior to my being put into the sack I was tied to a pillar in a dimly illuminated room without windows. My tormentors looked ruthless and savage. So, you are a writer? A burly amongst them asked curtly. I am not a writer, I replied, I write. The burly got annoyed. He pulled my hair and asked, what is the difference between the two? You wouldn't understand, I said. He kicked me between my legs. It was a painful blow. He asked, what do you write? I write the truth, I said, and nothing but the truth. My foot. He punched me with his fists and kept talking. You are an enemy agent. You write against the government. Which government? I moaned in pain. The government of Pakistan, he thundered. Where is Pakistan? I asked. Suddenly, they all pounced upon me. As they thrashed me to their heart's content they used filthy language against my mother and sisters, and abused the country they thought I was working for. He is a writer. A savage said. He writes against the rulers. What are we supposed to do with him? A subordinate asked. The savage said, chop off his hands. They chopped off my hands. He must not see, the same brute, who apparently commanded them said, pluck out his eyes. They blinded me with prongs. He must not talk, the savage ordered, cut off his tongue. They cut off my tongue. He must not hear, pierce his ears with red-hot spikes. They put red-hot spikes in my ears. Thereafter, they mutilated my limbs and drained every drop of blood from my body. Like Munsor, the martyred mystic, I turned my face heavenwards and spoke without speaking, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Finally they pumped a few bullets into my skull. For them it was all over. The mission assigned to them was accomplished. What defeated reasoning was that during the ordeal, during the agonizing period I was being tortured to death, I did not feel any pain. They put me with my severed limbs into a gunny bag and dumped me at the crossroads of history. After my death, I was intact in each part of my body. I was not naked.
I was as weightless as light, and as calm as a hermit in the Himalayas. I realized I was an unidentified person. I had no friends, no foes. I did not belong to any country, any sect or any religion. I was a liberated soul.